in our last class i said that when we start learning any language be it our mother tongue or any other language we start learning first the alphabet then we learn the grammar the vocabulary then all the rules of that language and then slowly we start forming the words the sentences and then passages so similarly in programming languages also we start our learning with alphabets in our last class we learned the character set of c language and in today's class we will learn c tokens we know that in a passage of text the individual words and the punctuation marks that we use they are called tokens so similar approach we have in programming language also in c program the smallest individual units that we write that we use in our programs they are known as c tokens in c language we have six types of c tokens they are keywords identifiers constants strings special symbols and operators so in today's class we will learn about all these c tokens one by one so first we will start with keywords now keywords are those words in our programs which are fixed their meanings are fixed they don't change keywords serve as basic building blocks in our program or in our program as program statements keywords must be written in lower case that we must remember otherwise we will get error this is a list of ncc keywords that we have to remember if we can remember then that will be helpful for us so whenever we will be giving any name to any variable we have to remember that we should not give the name from this list so any user defined name should not be part of this list or should not be any keyword now what is ansi ansi stands for american national standards institute this is an institute that sets standards and that is applicable for c programming language this is a list of ansi c keywords but your compilers may support some extra keywords so you have to verify from the manual of the compiler that you are installing in your system but this is the list of keywords that we mostly use in our programs the next type of c token is identifiers and what is identifier the identifiers are simply the names of variables functions and arrays which we give which we define so these are actually user defined names consisting of a sequence of letters digits and one point we have to remember that when we are giving a name to any variable function or array whatever the first character should not be any digit that always has to be a letter otherwise it will throw error now whenever we are defining the names of the identifiers both lower case and upper case letters are allowed though the use of lower case in identifiers is common now whenever we are defining any name for the identifiers they will be as meaningful as possible and to make them meaningful sometimes the identifiers become long so an identifier may have more than one word or even sometimes more than two or three words also so to separate those two or three words we should not use any space in between rather we can use underscore between those multiple words so underscore is permitted in case of identifiers this is a sample program where we will focus only on the names of the identifiers not on the logic so here as you can see we have two variables first x1 and y2 those have been declared as int by now you know that uh, program processes data input data and then by come by executing the logic that we write in our program it produces some output data and all those data are handled in our program by the help of variables and every data has its own type so whenever to use those or to process process those data when we are declaring any variable in the declaration part the type of that variable should be mentioned means the type of data that that variable will handle and i will discuss in my next class 
about these different data types that we use in C programs. Now, as you can see, if we focus only on the names of the identifiers, these are variables. So X1 here, the first character is letter and then the next character of the last character is digit. And the same case is for white. Then the next variable or identifier is amount and its corresponding data type is float. So from the name of the identifier, we can guess that what this variable can do or what this variable can store. Now the next type of variable, it is status then underscore new. So again, from the name itself, we can understand, okay, this will, this type is uh, character, definitely it is given. It will store some kind of status, which is uh, new, which is not old. And since we have two words here, status and new, so in between them, we have used an underscore. The next two variables are actually arrays in nature. They are not normal variables that we have seen in the first three lines. And in case of array, this is the syntax where within bracket, we declare the maximum size of the array. So arrays are what? Arrays can store similar kind of multiple data. It has its own syntax that I will discuss in my future class. And uh, when we declare array, then definitely the data that it will store, it will have its own type. It could be integer, float, character, and maximum how many data it can store that maximum size we need to define or declare within brackets but what we will focus more in this class is the names of the arrays so names of the arrays also come under identifiers that are defined by us by, by users or by programmers or developers and now here we can see this word power and then we have parentheses within bracket we have some arguments here power is not a keyword it is a user defined word here it is identifier the name of a function power is a function here function again i will discuss in future class next type of c token is constants constant you have idea what a constant is fixed values that do not change during the execution of a program that is from the perspective of a programming language and we use many types of constants the first one is integer constants so integer you have idea because you have studied in maths and this is some sample data that we may use as integer constants so here the integer constant may be positive may be negative that value could be zero also that is considered as integer but spaces commas and non-digit characters are not permitted between digits so that we have to remember and the data that we have uh, we have written here as integer constants those data are supported by decimal number system and we know that decimal number system means we have 10 digits from 0 to 9 and by using these 10 digits we can form or we can represent any data or any numeric value but apart from decimal number system we have two more number systems that we can use sometimes the one is octal number system and the other one is hexadecimal number system now in case of octal number system only eight digits are permitted from zero to seven and this is uh, some sample data in octal number system so what we have to remember here is when we use data in octal number system every data is preceded by zero so that you can see in this sample data and in hexadecimal number system we have 16 numbers from 0 to 15 so from 0 to 9 they are represented by digits and from 10 onwards 10 to 15 they are represented by alphabet starting from a so a b c d e f they can be written in lowercase or they can be written in uppercase also and one important point that we have to remember here is that every data in hexadecimal number system is preceded by 0 and then x so 0 and x could be as i said it could be in uppercase it could be in lowercase and these are some sample data in hexadecimal number system then next type of constants are real constants mean real constants means where we have the decimal point and these are some sample data Again, these constants, real constants could be positive, could, it could be negative. Before decimal point, we may have some non-zero digits. We may have zero as well, 
after decimal point also we may have some non-zero digits or we may have some zero also and when we use this type of data the real constants they can be also represented in exponential form so exponential form you have studied in mathematics that it has two parts mantisha part and exponent part so we use this symbol e that could be in lower case that could be in upper case also before e the part that we have or that we write that is actually called mantisha and the after e that we write is exponent before e we may we may have integer value we may have decimal value as well but after e we should have always integer value and there is another point that we have to remember that uh, that you can see in the sample data also that after e we may have positive sign that we don't need to write if it is written only three then that is taken by the compiler as plus three and in the second data as you can see it is e minus two so this minus sign is also permitted after e and before this mantisa part if we have any negative sign then that represents that the data itself is negative and what about this minus sign after e the calculation is done this way that 0.32 the first data in mantisha we have 0.32 and after e we have 3 so it will be 0.32 will be multiplied by 10 to the power 3 means 1000 so the real value of this data will be 0.32 multiplied by 1000 so this decimal point will move towards right by three places so the final value or the actual or real value will be three to zero similarly in the second data we have one two three and then e minus two so this time e minus two means it is 10 to the power minus two and 10 to the power minus two means one by actually 10 to the power two so basically one two three this time will be divided by 10 to the power two means 100 and the real value of this will be 1.23 so this way we calculate the real value from the exponential form the next type of constant is single character constant so from the type you can guess that what value it can store only single character and that will be enclosed by single quotes so within that single code we may have a character in lower case as well as in upper case or we may have any integer value also or we may have space also so when in our program we are writing any numeric value within single quotes that numeric value will be taken as a character so here five 5 will be considered as a character data and its equivalent numeric data will be represented by ascii code ascii here the full form is american standard code for information interchange in ascii we have equivalent numeric value for every letter and digit that we have learned this is a small sample program where we are printing the ascii value of these digits and letters here we have c in lowercase and we are printing the integer value of that character so here the ascii corresponding or equivalent ascii value of this small c will be 99 and again of the same c in lower case we are printing here the character value so that will be taken as character so character the same character same small c will be printed now in the third line we are printing we are here we have c in upper case so the same letter in lower case and in upper case they will be handled separately and for both of them in ascii we have separate values so c for upper case if we are if we print the integer value then we can see the in ascii the integer value will be 67 now come to this value where we have entered 5 within single quote we have entered 5 as character and now when we want to print the integer value of 5 apparently it looks like 5 is an integer value no here 5 has been taken as character so the ascii the integer corresponding integer value in ascii for 5 will be 53 
this time it will not be taken as 5 now in the last line 5 the same 5 which has been entered as character and if we want to print the character value of that data then as you can see it is printing as 5 so 5 has been taken as character here another type of constant is string constant and string is what it is array of characters array of what it can store similar type of multiple data so it is basically a sequence of characters instead of storing single character it can store multiple characters together and this time the data will be entered or written within double quotes and letters digits and also special characters spaces all are allowed as part of string constants next type of c token is string constants that i have already discussed then next one is special symbols that also i have discussed in my last class so these are some sample special symbols and the last one last c token is operators and under operators again we have different types of operators like arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators assignment operators increment and decrement operators conditional operators bitwise operators and special operators all these operators i will discuss in my future class so that will be a separate class specially on operators now just for your information here we have a list which has backslash character constants that sometimes we use among these constants mostly that we use is new line horizontal tab backspace so it's better that we have the idea of backslash character constants. these constants are mainly used in output functions that's all about today's class. See you in the next class. Thank you.